So for those of you who've come in slightly later, um, we are picking up something that we've, we looked at earlier in the year under algebra. So that's why, as you can see by the question written on the board, um, I'm going straight for the jugular. I'm not going to spend any time on like those, those tame uh, quadratics in disguise, is what we used to call them, and what I still call them. We're going to go straight for one which is a little more challenging and demands a little more of that sort of extended knowledge, okay? So the whole premise here is we're going to work with these equations, but what we're going to get, or what we're going to start with, doesn't look like a quadratic, but eventually we'll get something which does, and we can use all the knowledge we already possess about quadratics, okay? So the first thing when you notice this question is that it doesn't fit the nice uh, the most simplest form of an equation reducible to a quadratic. When I talk about simplest form, I mean things like this. That's not a quadratic, but it's very easy to replace with a quadratic. You just have to choose a suitable substitution. What would you choose in this case? Yeah, let, let m or u or k or whatever your pretty rule of choice, let it be equal to x squared. And then what you'll get is something like this, uh, k squared plus 5, k plus 6, and then off you go, okay? We've seen versions like this, we've seen versions with trig sort of tucked in there, like um, sine squared x plus 5 sine x plus 6, etc. But then you look at something like this, and you're like, um, what? <laughs> you know, where do I go? There's no simple thing that you can substitute in all three of those that will just make it all collapse, okay? So therefore, we sort of need to go a little bit back to the drawing board. Come in, come see. <coughs> Excuse me. Just, just come in, just come in. I'll cut it later. And I'll, 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 wait, I'll wait for, awkwardly for Michael. Michael, nice of you to join us. Hurry up. That's why I'm standing here. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. She's, I know where she's going to go. Uh, no, I'm not. It's okay. I know where she's going. Give me a little bit of credit. Um, so, as I said, we're going back to the drawing board on this. No simple substitution is going to be our first step. What can we possibly do that could make this a little bit simpler? Any suggestions? Okay, squaring seems like an obvious strategy to take because I'm full of square roots. Okay, so let's see what happens if I do that. I'll start with the right-hand side. That looks a bit easier to deal with. When I square that, I'm going to end up with... So, that's okay. That looks good. But then when you get to squaring this, this is going to become a... Well, this is a binomial, isn't it? There's two terms, right? We know if you square a plus b, you don't just get a squared plus b squared. What do you get? Good. So there's this middle bit, which is kind of awkward. So if you're writing along with me, you're going to get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Okay. Now, as it turns out, this is not the only place that something like this will turn up. Uh, later on, when we have a look at this topic called locus, this is later this term and next term as well, you're going to get equations that look like this, that look disastrous. You get all these square roots popping up because every time you evaluate a distance in coordinate geometry, you get a square root, right? That's from Pythagoras. So this is not just the brainchild of someone who likes to make messy looking questions. This does actually happen. So now what? Was that a bad idea? Should I have done something else? Because often, you know, you, go, you attempt a problem and you try something, you're like, whoa, that's... That's turn back. I don't want to go in that direction anymore. Is this irredeemable? Like, do I need to try something else from the first line? Chiao, do you want to make a suggestion? Yeah, uh, move the x plus 5 to x plus 2, uh, x minus 2. Move these guys well, over to this side? Yeah, yeah, but like in your line. You mean this line here? Yeah, and then divide the over. Okay, so hold on. I will come to this in a second. Before I answer that question, I want to rewind and I want to come back to this line. You know, in circle geometry, we've done this before, right? Particularly in circle geometry, you start looking at this angle, that angle, and you're like, oh, I, I came up with zero equals zero. You, you get stuck, right? So you're like, I have to try some other strategy. Should I try something else from this line? That's my question. Yeah. 
This is an important step, by the way, because if I just tell you what you need to do now, then you don't flex that muscle that says, wait, is this really the way to go? Which is a very important muscle to flex. Najee, do you have a suggestion? Could I divide? Let's have a look. This top line here, is there anything I can divide it by that would make this a bit simpler? Can we go see? What, what could I divide by? What might be useful? Hmm. The lesson is turn up on time. Hurry up. Serious question. We tried squaring and we all ended up with that and it didn't look like what we wanted. Um, what could we divide by that might be useful? Square root 5x minus 6 divide through by this, yeah? So if I did divide through by this, then I'm going to get this on square root 5x minus 6, this on square root 5x minus 6. Is that better or is it worse? Mm. I'd probably say it's about the same. It's about the same. Now, what I'm trying to get you toward, because we distinguish between exercises and problems in... Um, in mathematics, right? An exercise is, you've got, you've got 50 of these, you know exactly what to do, go ahead and do it 50 times, right? And then practice that muscle and get quick and accurate at it, develop what we call fluency, right? Exercises are good, they have their place. And then you have problems where you, it's not obvious what you need to do, you don't know what the steps are yet. I'm about to turn this problem into an exercise. Once we're at the end of this, you'll know what to do. But the time when it's a problem is actually much more useful because you have to think harder. Do you notice that no matter what you do with these, you can divide through, you can, um, you can shift these all over on one side, right? If I had three square roots on that side, would I have something better or worse? I'd actually have something worse because I'm still gonna have to square somewhere and then you've got something worse than a binomial to square. Then you have like a trinomial, that's gonna be disastrous, okay? Uh, there's no way you could rearrange these things such that when you square you don't get two square roots, okay? So all that just to say, this doesn't look nice at the moment, but we had no other choice. Like this is literally the best option. And we can recover from here, we can. Can we do anything to the left hand side right now to simplify it? Have a look at it. Surely we can do something, right Eric? Um, we can multiply them to the radicals and we can evaluate the <coughs> Okay, these guys can go together if we so choose. And these guys can also go together in a different way. We can collect like terms, okay? I'm going to go for that second option in a second. As you'll see briefly, there's not heaps of an advantage to putting these together. Um, x plus 5, x minus 2. Collect like terms for me. 2x plus 3. And then you've got this guy hanging out over here. Yes? And you've got a right-hand side. Is there something else you can do to make this simpler? In an easy way, think of easy things you can do. It's early in the morning, isn't it? Surely, surely I can collect like terms again, right? So I'm going to subtract and subtract, yes? So that leaves me with this, let's have a look. Equals this, this, yep. Okay, it's early in the morning for me too. Okay, now have a look at this. This looks bad, but it's still workable. Remember that thing you did in the first line? You thought, instinctively, I should square because I have square roots, right? And that's good. You improved things a little bit. Well, you can do it, you can do it again, can't you? Look, you've all got, you don't have a binomial anymore on the left-hand side, so you can square that quite easily. One, two, three terms, four, x plus five, x minus 2. This is why I didn't bother expanding them just yet. And what do you get on the right hand side? Yeah, so this is, I can, I can go ahead and do this, can't I? Uh, what's this going to be? This will be 9x squared, uh, that's minus 27x, so minus 54x plus 81. Okay, now I will pause there. I will pause there because what have we done? We transformed have we not transformed a problem into an exercise? You know what to do with this, don't you? So I'm going to give you a few minutes to catch up and do that. As you do that, I want to make one more warning, okay? 
when we progressed from line one to line five, okay, you squared and you squared twice. Did you notice that? Okay. Now, when you square, you change the equation that you're working with, right? For example, um, suppose I gave you this equation, this equation here. How many solutions do you expect there to be? Two. What about this equation? I squared both sides. We tend to get more and more solutions as we get higher powers of x. Have you noticed that? Right? Now, I, I, I don't know how many solutions there are. Actually, I can think about how many solutions there are to this. Not that important. My point is, watch out, because you've changed this problem. Okay? I'm not going to give you any more clues than that. I just want you to be conscious of that. You have five lines. If you haven't already, pop them down. See where you can go. Off you go.